thanks to everyone for joining. As Dorothy already mentioned, this new season of Meet the Experts is going to bring you some presentations from the Department Data Services for the Social Sciences, um, DSS for short. And in the presentations, we're going to cover important aspects and topics of our work. So I've um, put a small preview of that on this slide. And um, in a nutshell, the activities of um, data services for the social sciences is to provide infrastructure and services for researchers, um, projects or research organizations in the social sciences in the area of data management, data sharing and access, and data curation and uh, long-term preservation. And we do a lot of this work in close cooperation with the department survey data curation. And um, yeah, so today's presentation is actually a case in point because um, Pascal is um, my co-speaker is from the from our sister department and together we will give you some insights into the topic of certification for research data centers. To set out, I would like um, to give you a couple of definitions so that we have common ground with regard to terminology. So first of all, the first question is what is certification? And according to this definition, which is a common definition is um, certification is a process by which an independent body and um, certification authority inspects a product service or system and it inspects this um, product using criteria or requirements derived from a technical standard, a standard document. And if this independent body finds that the, the service meets these requirements put down in the standard, it issues a certificate which um, says or um, which confirms the compliance to this standard. And if we think of the, the repositories ecosphere, there are a number of uh, potential certification processes that might be relevant for repositories. And I've put some examples on this slide and we can look at certification standards and processes um, from different angles. So there are some certifications that are specific um, to a particular domain or discipline. We have certifications that may be specific to repositories um, which um, hold certain object types, or we have certifications for a specific process. And so if you look, for example, at the, the Dini certificate listed here, this is very relevant in the domain of libraries, and it focuses on repositories that um, hold um, scholarly publications. If you look at ISO 9001, um, on the other hand, this is discipline and domain agnostic, and it simply focuses or maybe not simply because it's an ISO certification, but it focuses on the, on processes related to quality assurance. Um, another example is the, the RAD SVD accreditation. And um, this is um, a specific certification procedure for social sciences data repositories. So again, there's a, a very well-defined scope of that. And um, as already mentioned today, we want to have a closer look at certifications for trustworthy digital repositories. So hence a definition of what a trustworthy digital repository is. And um, for a TDR for short is one that has a mission to keep digital resources in its collections um, usable and accessible and understandable for a defined community of users. So for example, um, in the case of GESIS, this defined community of users are researchers in the social, social sciences. And the, the task of the repository, the TDR, is to, to keep these um, resources alive and usable to this community. And um, in order to be considered a trustworthy digital repository, it's also important that the repository undertakes some measures. So for example, a certification process um, by which it can demonstrate that it fulfills this mission so that it's actually capable of fulfilling the mission and that it's undertaking um, steps to actually comply with this mission. And um, certification is a process that is definitely resource intensive in the sense that it costs 
um, staff time. There are some financial resources that that need to be um, included as well if you want to go for um, certification. But I would like, uh, before we look closer at the, the different standards, I would like to highlight again that there are a lot of benefits to obtaining um, certification as a trustworthy digital repository. And I would like to highlight on the one hand that for the data producers, having a repository that is certified as a TDR can be an important aspect um, in complying with um, funders requirements or journal publisher requirements because a lot of funders now um, make it mandatory for the for the research projects they fund to um, to make the data accessible in a suitable repository after the project ends and similarly with publishers um, it's often um, required that researchers publish replication materials in a trusted repository so this is one important aspect of certification for data producers um, and if we look at the data repository of course, there is um, this this outward facing um, benefit of you know the 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 repository can demonstrate and show to the outside that it is trustworthy. But in addition, I would say from my own experience that there is also an, an inward um, or internal facing benefit to um, the undergoing a certification process because it really um, means that within the repository, you have to turn over every stone. You look at all of the processes, all of the workflows. You look at your documentation and policies. So it's it's really a way of yeah, putting to the test everything that you do. And on top of that, in the certification process, you also re receive expert feedback on all of these processes. So this is one very big benefit of undergoing a certification process. Now, if we look at certification standards that um, are specifically for TDR certification, there are now, I think at this point, there are three very um, well-known and, and popular ones, or popular is maybe not the right word, but these are, I think, the three standards that are most widely widely known and used in the community. We have the Quattro C requirements, we have the Nestor seal, which is a certification based on the D norm 31644, and we have ISO 16363. And as you can see, there are some differences between them in a, on a formal level. Um, Quattro seal has 16 criteria against which compliance is measured, and there is an administrative cost of, or an administrative administrative fee of 1,000 euros. The Nestor seal has 34 criteria and a fee of 500 euros and um, ISO certification, the full ISO certification, as you can imagine, is in a, in a different league. So to that standard, there are 85 crit criteria. So it's, it's much more detailed, much more granular. And the cost is also considerably higher because you have to include with this one, you include site visits of auditors and so on. So it's a overall a much bigger operation. And in the following, I'm going to focus on the Quattro seal requirements and say a few more words about them because as, as Dorothy said, I'm a member of the Quattro seal board. So I this is the, the standard I have most insight in. And in addition, it is also the go-to standard, I would say, if a repository starts thinking about TDR certification, um, is taking first steps towards this, then I think the Quattro seal is a very good place to start because it is meant to be a core certification. So it's trying to capture whatever the community considers core with regard to trustworthy digital repositories. And as I already said, there is a um, the the standard has 16 requirements for which an applicant has to provide documentation and answers. We have um, six requirements for the, that cover the topic of organizational infrastructure. Then there are um, another six, is that correct? <laughs> um, dealing with digital object management. And we have um, now three requirements that focus on topics of technology. And then there are requirements um, listed as R0. 
And here the applicant provides a lot of background information about the repository. And even though this has the number zero, it's actually a very, very important part of the application because here, for example, you describe the users that you, um, you're catering to, you describe you describe the a bit about the background of your repository. So it's an it's a very important section that is used by the reviewers then to to interpret you know the responses you you give to the other requirements. So the the documentation that you provide, the responses you provide as an applicant are then reviewed by two independent experts from the core trust assembly of reviewers. And usually there is some back and forth. So the reviewers are going to have questions um, and they will return the application, the repository answers. And once this process has com been completed, the Quadrustial board has another look at the application and ideally grants um, Quadrustial certification, which is then valid for three years. And to apply for Quadrustial, it's important to first have a look at who is in scope for a core trust seal application. And the most central requirement here is that the applicant must have a mission that means that the applicant takes responsibility for long-term preservation of the, the collections the applicant holds. So it's important to have this, this long-term preservation aspect in your in your mission and to also fulfill this mission and and this is then what the application has to demonstrate so in addition to showing that the the repository has a mission for long term preservation the applicant then also has to demonstrate that they have sufficient expertise and sufficient rights to to fulfill this mission and they have to demonstrate that they have appropriate infrastructure at their hand. And this is policies, people, skills, workflows, technologies, um, and so on um, needed to preserve the data and to keep it understandable and usable. And when you start looking at the, the topic of certification, so if you have an idea that this is what I want to do this is what what I want to work towards, then I would like to rec recommend the first um, a few first steps steps that you should take. And the first and I think probably most important recommendation is to get your management on board as early as possible and obtain a mandate for what you are doing because the certification process is going to entail probably changes to workflows and policies. It's it's going to need um, staff resources, financial resources, and it's very difficult to, to work on this and accomplish this without having the backing of um, the Institute lead. And in order to, to get the management on board, um, my recommendation is also to think about what your objective is in obtaining certification. What is it you want to achieve by this? Because this can can help thinking about this and, and having a, a clear idea of what you want to achieve can help convincing management that it's a good thing to do. And then based on this, you can um, think about which service and workflows you actually want to certify because it's not necessarily the case that you have to get certification for your entire repository. You could also pick a sub-collection in your repository, for example, one that is curated um, to a higher degree and standard than, than other parts of the collection or that is preserved in a, in a different manner than other parts of the collection. So it's very much possible to focus on a, on a workflow rather than immediately going for the entire repository. So also when you determine the objective, have a look at the, the service and workflows you actually want to include in the certification. And based on this, um, I think you can take the step towards looking at suitable standards, maybe also taking account the, the different dimensions I mentioned in the beginning. So the domain, the discipline, the object type covered in the, in the standard. Then as a next step, my recommendation would be to carry out an initial self-assessment using the standard you, um, you, you selected. And this doesn't have to be very detailed in the beginning, but I really recommend 
going through each requirement and thinking about, do I have the workflows in place for that? Do I have the policies document and, and do I have the policies in place and are the workflows documented? Because this can help you to identify missing documentation, missing poli policies and identify um, potential challenges. Another recommendation is to combine this with a fair assessment. So with a fair assessment, you could um, gather an idea of the metadata quality and metadata is always an important part of the, the certification for trusted digital repositories. And then a final recommendation is to find peers that you can go through this process together because I, I don't think I can stress enough how helpful it is to, to share this process with, with others who are in a similar situation, having similar questions, similar problems, maybe it's, it's a really great way to approach certification. And with this, I would like to hand over to Pascal because um, Consort SVD is doing exactly that. It's, it's working on forming a group of repositories who are yeah, working towards certification. Yes, thank you, Jonas, for this excellent introduction into the framework of the core trusts here. What we are um, doing in the Consort SVD project is indeed to look at the needs of the consort of the research data centers. And maybe I have to give a little bit of background because I'm not sure that all the audience know what research data centers mean within the German context. So um, the Consort SWD is the social science consortium within the German uh, national research data infrastructure. So we receive funding to improve um, access and management of research data in Germany. And within the social sciences in Germany, we already have a quite well developed but highly fragmented data infrastructure. Um, what you see is that those institutions that were highly active in producing data would also um, create research data centers as access points to their own data. Think about the social economic panel in Germany, think about um, data from public offices like uh, the statistical office and you have access points to this data. Um, and now the landscape, the research data landscape changes because we have so many attention to the topic from politics and funders. And this has a consequence. It means that these research data centers start to um, acquire external data for archiving and sharing. And this is an important element um, to open up the existing research data infrastructure to other data producers and to avoid to construct redundant structures. Um, one example for this is, for instance, that Consort SVD has these research data RDM grants where scholars from universities can receive funding to publish a data set together with a research data center. Um, and when you look into the details of these processes, then you will uh, learn that data producers cannot choose their repository freely, not in any not in all cases. So Jonas also stressed it, already stressed it, the funders sometimes have ideas about sufficient quality of the repositories. Um, so for instance, Science Europe has a checklist for choosing your repository and the certification is one among the most important um, criteria because it shows you that you have uh, sufficient quality in your workflows. So especially high impact data from European Union funded problem projects look for repositories that are um, certified. So we have a strong incentive, especially for those research data centers that want to play a role in research data infrastructure to achieve certification. And then what we also see is that many international data centers and repositories in social science, economics, humanities are already certified, especially Clarine data centers for uh, language data and the social science CESTA uh, data archives um, organized in the CESTA consortium uh, are partly to have partly uh, the core trust seal. And this is an important element of showing that you have the capacity for long-term digital preservation. 
So, um, the next slide, please, Jonas. Um, right. So, what, what we do at the in, in the Consort SVD project together with our colleagues from the German Center for Educational Research um, is that we try to support existing research data centers or research data centers that want to have an accreditation with the German Data Forum to go through this um, process. The first objective, of course, is to demonstrate that the existing data infrastructure has the quality to um, archive and share data. And at the same time, we will also want to improve, to help improve the internal processes within the RDCs. And this is an important um, point because many RDCs, especially driven from scientific institutions, they start as projects. And these projects first focus very much on the data product they want to offer to the users. They do not focus so much on the internal processes and the documentation of the processes. They focus on the quality of the data and the quality of the data documentation. And often when the project ends and the RDC enters in a more stable phase, then the processes are existing, but they are not very well documented and certification helps to, um, to do exactly this essential point for a long-term um, structure for research data. So what we do is first to help understand the core concepts of digital long-term preservation, which is not easy because research data centers and other domain-specific repositories are run by scientific stuff that has a has uh, training in the domain, but not in information sciences or in archiving. So they have to learn what it means to use standards, etc., etc. Um, then what we want to do is that uh, we learn from each other, sharing the experiences about the core trustee certification, maybe also accreditation, but this has been postponed a little bit. And we want to produce examples for the documents that are required for core trustee certification so that we can have a long-term knowledge transfer into the community of research data professionals in social science and economics. Next slide, please. So what we're doing is exactly following Jonas' recommendation is to first create a community of people who are working on this topic and who are convinced that this is important for the development of their own services. And then we start to, with a workshop series where we ask about the expectations and ideas of RDC stuff about certification. Because we don't know what the knowledge level is, what the expectations are, and how important the topic is. Jonas raised the issue. If you don't have full commitment from your organization, then probably it won't be successful. Um, and then we address the critical topics um, of, of certification and the critical topic per se is that what is long-term preservation? Because if you look into the practices in different repositories, you would see that long-term preservation is more a continuum of uh, ideas about keeping data in life and it's not something where you can say this is long-term preservation, this is not. So um, learning about the core concepts, um, managing expectations uh, and sharing experiences is what is the most important for this measure and we have we formed or will form a small group of research data centers that go through this process hopefully so the expected outcome is that some of these research data centers will get the certification that we will have some guidelines that will help in future other rdcs or repositories from social sciences to follow this path and especially we want to create awareness within the German research data infrastructure, because my impression is that the Germans look especially to German institutions and lack the larger horizon of what goes on in Europe and worldwide. And this is always a problem if then you realize that maybe the others have better services, higher professionalization, and maybe also better structures. So this is what we are going to, um, to address in the Consort SPD project together with my colleagues Uto Hofstetter, Daniel Buck from DZHW in Hannover and Kerstin Beck from Survey Data Curation Department here at GESES. And so for, con for conclusion, I hand over to Jonas with his excellent expertise on the topic. Thank you, Pascal. And I have only one, one last slide. And 
Pascal already mentioned it that when we look at TDR certification, often the the question of what what is actually what is long term preservation is one that becomes very yeah it comes to the foreground and becomes very pressing. And I mentioned before that for the core trust seal, um, offering long term preservation is actually the uh, prerequisite of applying for core trust seal. Then I also mentioned that. Certification is a process that is resource intensive, so financial and, and staff resources. So there may be a number of reasons why a repository, a research data center decides not to pursue full certification at this point. And because that is a very, I think it's a, this is a very valid decision because like as I said, you know, it's it's important to to weigh the the benefits um, with the against the the expenditure that that it, this means. You have to think about what is my objective in obtaining certification, and if it turns out that maybe full certification is not what you want to do at this point, then I would like to point out some alternatives to full certification because I think that a lot of the benefits from the certification process can be achieved without going through the entire formal um, process by which an author, um, a certification authority then issues this certificate. And the first thing that I would like to re recommend is that you begin mapping your workflows and repository functions to a suitable standard. And I'm saying here that map high level workflows because I don't think that this should be too too detailed, but I think it can be very helpful to, for example, consider which roles and which systems are involved in in my ingest activity, the activity by which data is comes into the repository, which roles and responsibilities and, and systems are involved in data access. So I, I'm trying to not <laughs> not say the, the bad word um, OAIS standard. There is an archival standard for an open archival information system, which is incredibly com complex, and I don't want you to read it, but this has coined some very important terminology in the long-term preservation community and ingest and access preservation planning. These are concepts that that play a role there. And they correspond to functions in the repository and workflows in the repository. And it can make sense if you have a standard that you think might work for your repository to have a look at, you know, what what concepts does the standard use and try to map your your workflows um, onto this, this standard. Then a second recommendation is to carry out self-assessments with a suitable requirement catalog. This could be a self-assessment using the core trust seal requirements, for example. You, you know, there are other standards out there that I mentioned that you might want to use. There's um, an alternative in use it, that you could use maturity or capability models. These are not necessarily designed for certification, but they still help you to have a closer look at the what what you actually do in order to preserve and curate the, the data that you hold. And one that I would like to point out is the, the DPC RAM. It's the rapid assessment model where you can assess um, the, the maturity that your organization has with regard to long-term preservation processes. And another one, which is very, has a fairly narrow scope and is, I think, actually quite quite easy to to apply are the NDSA levels of digital preservation, which allow you to assess your maturity um, with regard to different aspects of digital preservation. So this is something you could start with to simply get a better grasp of where you and um, your organization stand. Then I would recommend, regardless of whether you are going for full certification or not, to seek peer advice based on your self-assessment find organizations that are similar to you, have maybe already undergone certification and 
discuss points from your self-assessment with them confidentially if if this is needed. If you do not need confidentiality, it might be an opportunity possibility to publish summarized results of the self-assessment. So you could say, we carried out a self-assessment following this standard, these criteria, and this is the outcome, or this is a summary of the outcome. Because like this, trust, trust is a lot about transparency. And by this, you can demonstrate to your users, even if we have not gone the full road to and and um, to certification, we have done something in order to assess our processes, and we're trying to to make this more transparent and and understandable to our stakeholders. So this is something you may want to consider. And the final thing I, I already mentioned that, but I think it makes sense to use any of these measures in combination with a fair assessment, because that gives you a good way of communicating about the quality of your metadata. So if you have results of a fair assessment. This too is something you may want to consider publishing along with a with a self assessment. So this concludes my 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 tips and tricks <laughs> for certification. Um, you find the contact information for Pascal and me on on this slide. The slides will be published. Um, along the the slides also contain references and and some. Uh, links for further resources that you could have a look at. So we publish that, of course, along with the slides. And before we end this part of the, the, the presentation, I would like to just run a, a short ad again uh, and interest you in the upcoming talks um, on data services, data archiving and research data management. So here you can see the topics again that we are going to cover and the next um, next presentation will be on September 28, and then um, Oliver Wattler is going to give an overview of the services, the data services that the um, DSS department offers. Yeah, and with that, I'm saying thank you. Thank you.